program today, we're actually looking at climate change and its implications for the economy. I'm being joined on the program by an environmentalist and he's also a member of the Nigeria Conservation Foundation, Desmond Majakodumi. Mr. Majakodumi, good morning and thank you for coming in. Good morning. Actually, I'll need to make a slight correction. Hmm. I stopped being an environmentalist about four years ago. But you still talk about the environment, Mr. Majakodumi. Well, no, I took it to a different... Uh, the reason I stopped being an environmentalist is because I heard a speech that Prince Charles gave. Mm. And the speech was, you know, it was a very simple speech. He was speaking to the G20, okay, that's the world leaders. And he said that if we lose the battle against climate change, we shall have lost the battle against the preservation of the future of this planet, and we shall be bequeathing onto our children a poisoned chalice. And that just shocked me to the core of depth of my being. Because what this man was saying is that our legacy to our kids in our parlance here would be we're going to give our begin calabash, where poison day inside. That day, I stopped being an environmentalist and I became an environmental activist. So, Mr. Maja Kodumi, an environmental activist, joins me on the program to look at climate change and the implications for the economy. Thank you so much for the clarification. I'm very sure anybody who listened to what you said will also have a rethink about being an environmentalist and take up the challenge of being an environmental activist. Activist, exactly, because this man was not just making a bogus statement. This statement was heavily weighted, and it was a statement that was drawn from the knowledge that somebody in his particular position would be privy to. Prince Charles of the UK, he is privy to the most intellectualized uh, aspects of scientific discourse and intervention that anybody possibly could be. And based on this, he said that if we continue on this path, <laughs> we shall be poisoning the future of our children. And, you know, this is obviously something that would hit home to anybody. And this is one of the reasons why this particular conference that's taking place in New York is taking place. It wasn't on the agenda of the United Nations at the beginning of this year. But what happened? Because Ban Ki-moon, very progressive, very pragmatic guy, had now become privy to certain informations that had come out from the International Panel for Climate Change and other organizations, he said we must have an emergency conference on climate change. One of the things they actually highlighted there, the focus for the summit is on cities, land and energy, or one of the many focuses is on that. Let's get your thought. Why cities, land and energy? Because that's where the most negative impact on the environment has been coming from. This uh, mass migration to urban areas. And, um, you know, the city, by its intrinsic nature, tends to draw a lot more on energy resources. Just the development of the city structure, just, you know, the buildings and the road networks and all the other networks and infrastructural facilities that go into developing a city, they all draw down on the various resources of the planet, particularly the energy resources, and then the energy required to run the city infrastructure. Um, whether it's in a cold climate or a warm climate, you will have all types of apparatus that will be conditioning your air, that will be recycling the air, circulating it, and so on and so forth, not to mention the lighting as well, street lights, internal lights, and so on and so forth. So all these have uh, a very strong um, need for energy. It draws down on your energy resources. And this is why the focus has been on that, because over the last uh, 15 or 20 years, there's, there's been a, a, a very, very uh, rapid move towards urbanization. And I think we've now reached the threshold where over 50% of the Earth's population actually live in cities now, as opposed to in rural areas. And because, um, <laughs> because the production of this energy is at the root cause of the problem that we're facing. And, you know, it's, it's a very fundamental problem. And it's a problem that has been described 
by Ban Ki-moon as the most defining problem that humanity has ever faced. You know, and this comes as a little bit of a surprise and sometimes an inconvenient truth, as Al Gore would say, to a lot of people because we are faced with what appear to be far more pressing problems. For instance, you know, the, the, the problem of terrorism that is ravaging the world right now, you know, uh, problems of, of poverty, you know, these seem to be far more pressing. But people like Ban Ki-moon are telling us that this, this tackling climate change that has been exacerbated, that has been driven by overconsumption of energy, which draws its source from fossil fuel, is the most defining problem. It's the most critical problem facing humanity. So at this point in time, it does it not seem as if uh, we're starting a little too late? Even though I know that Mr. M Mr. Ban has been talking about climate change, even at the World Economic Forum in Davos, he actually made a very strong case for uh, ensuring that countries begin to pay closer attention to how they handle climate change issues, especially since it, it has it, it affects the economy more than most because we have agriculture, we have forestry, and and we have. Um, the, the rest of the, the, the things that, you know, we need in terms of running the economy. I'm so glad you brought that out because you are exactly right. You've hit the nail right on the head with a, with a sledgehammer. We're starting too late. It's, it, it, it can be akin to, you know, your doctor for the last uh, 15 years. Your doctor has been telling you to adjust your diet because he can see that you are leading yourself to a diabetic crisis, that you are prone to diabetes, and because of your diet, you are now going to become a diabetic. So for the last 15 years, your doctor has been you know, advising you on a regular basis that you must adjust your diet or you're going to have a diabetic crisis. But you carried on regardless, just ignoring him. Oh, this doctor, he wants to spoil my phone. This doctor, he doesn't know what he's talking about, even though he's a highly qualified doctor and he was drawing down from the experience of several other doctors who were even more qualified than him. He was giving you advice. This is exactly what the climatic scientists have been telling world leaders for the past 15 years, that we must adjust our energy sourcing. We must stop this pollution of greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And we've been ignoring. Now you ignore the doctor, eventually you become a diabetic. And believe you me, the, the management of a, 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 post, a pre-diabetic is far different to the management of somebody who becomes diabetic.